Don't you want to know where you're going before you pull the trigger on that gun to your head? I'm about to tell you true stories. One day, I answered the suicide hotline, and I heard this woman's frantic voice say to me, I know you help stop suicide. My brother John called me, and he said he's so depressed, he has his finger on the trigger of his revolver, and when he pulls it, he's going to instant peace. She said, I called the police. They're afraid to break down the door. He might pull the trigger. I said, quick, give me the phone number. I called it. Finally heard a man's voice say, this is John. Goodbye to you and goodbye to the world. Bury me in peace. Believing he could hear me over the answering machine, I said, don't you want to know where you're going before you pull the trigger on that gun? What if it's worse for you after death than where you are now? How do I know? I died. I went to the other side. I had horrific regrets. If suicide is a good idea, it will be a good idea next week. Please hear my story first. Death is not the answer. What I said caught John's interest. He picked up the phone and said, I'll give you one week. If I don't agree with what you say, I'm finishing the job. He put the gun down, opened the door for the police. They took him to the mental hospital. I'll get back to you about John. What I want to talk to you now about is suicide prevention. If you know someone who's really feeling depressed or suicidal, raise your hand. Surprising, isn't it? Even though only God can judge accountability, many suicides are done for really small reasons. As an example, Robert, a 17-year-old outstanding high school student, committed suicide. Why? His parents were devastated when they read his note. It said he couldn't face them because he had a B on his report card. He was no longer a straight-A student. Suicide rates are skyrocketing. Back to John. While he was in the mental hospital, he heard my true life after life story. And he changed his mind about wanting to die. And he started a suicide prevention group right there in the hospital. Soon he was released. He went on to college, earned his psychology degree, and continued his life-saving work. What did I say to John that helped him so he changed his mind, decided he wanted to live? I told him about my childhood, which was very tragic. And then when I was eight years old, I went to a funeral and I heard how nice heaven is. Hey, I'm very practical. Why stay in this world with all of its problems if I could just die and go to that place of peace? From then on, I was suicidal. After a terrible auto accident in 1960, and eight failed back surgeries, I attempted suicide twice. Then in 1980, my father committed suicide. This reinforced my belief that I wanted to die. In 1983, after having been severely ill for over a year, having repeated pneumonia, bedridden, allergic to the antibiotics, the doctor told me there was nothing more they could do for me and I was going to be dying. Wow, when I heard that, I was more thrilled than you would have been if you had winning tickets to the lottery. I wasn't going to have to kill myself. I was just going to die and go to that place of peace. My condition worsened. I woke up one day barely conscious. And then all of a sudden, I was up and looking down at my body. It was shocking. I had a life review. I saw how I'd given up. I didn't learn and make it through problems, but giving up, I just wasted my valuable earth time. I also saw that when someone dies and it's their time to die, they go home to a grand celebration. It was agonizing regrets for me. I pleaded, please let me have another chance to live. I promised to tell everyone who would listen how valuable earth time is. Then I saw this gold crown tooth. I knew that my tooth had something to do with my being so ill and dying. Then I was back in my body. I wasn't that wispy thing anymore. I could feel my face. The next day, I had my mom take me to the dentist. I insisted he pull that tooth even though it didn't hurt and nothing showed on the x-rays. 
after it was out. The surprised dentist told me and showed me the blackened roots with melted infection up in my sinuses. I began feeling better immediately, and within three weeks I felt like a new person. One of the things I discovered while I was on the other side, we all began dying the day we were born, and none of us know how much time we have left on earth. I also learned life is too short to be angry, to hold grudges, and the importance of being loving, kind, forgiving, merciful, even on the freeways. Look around you. There are many hurting people who could use a kind word, a good deed. And remember those people you thought of when you were thinking who was suicidal? Maybe you can help prevent suicide. Share my story. Share the message of what if it's worse for you after death than it is now. Suicide is not the answer. Life is worth living and loving, even with all of its challenges.